Hello and welcome to Principles of Mathematics lesson number six. In this uh, video we're going to look at numeration systems. Some of the topics we'll cover include numbers, their origin and their representation in numerals and models, different numeration systems including the Hindu Arabic system, place value and counting in base 10 and also in other bases. In this graphic, we can see some of the various uh, systems that uh, have existed. Uh, for example, the Babylonian, Egyptian, Mayan, Greek, etc. Uh, you can see how uh, numbers used to be represented in each of these systems. Uh, here you are seeing basically numbers 1 through 10. And in some of the systems, we had a 0, such as in the Mayan and the Hindu Arabic and Hindu Arabic systems. Um, so uh, some of you may be familiar with the Roman numerals, um, etc. Here's the Greek numerals. Uh, some of them are very pictorial, um, the Mayan system, etc. Now, my interest is for you to be able to understand and appreciate some of these. Uh, you are not going to be uh, required to memorize these so don't panic just basically uh, you can have a print out of these uh, uh, graphics that you see here and use them uh, to uh, generate some of the numbers if needed but uh, we're not going to be needing to memorize these so that should take the pressure off so i just want you to focus on understanding them and how to utilize them a numeration system is basically a collection of properties and symbols agreed upon to represent numbers in a systematic way. So that's why you have different numeration systems, but in all cases, some people got together, they agreed on what the numeration system is going to look like, and then they had to consistently use them. Of course, one of the most basic numeration systems is the tally numeration system. That's when you basically put a mark for each number counted and then once you reach five you put a line through uh, diagonally like that so here you would have five ten and then three more so that would represent 13. some of the older systems uh, went up to uh, much larger numbers and as you can see for example in the egyptian numeral system uh, the pictures got quite elaborate. You know, you have the vertical staff, the heel bone, scroll, lotus flower, pointing finger representing 10,000, for instance, um, polygog or burbot was uh, a representative of 100,000 and the astonished man <laughs> represented a million. Of course, when you see some of the older systems you really start to gain an appreciation for the hindu arabic uh, system which we use uh, in the modern world and how much simpler it is to comprehend here's another example in the babylonian enumeration system this represent you know upside down triangle filled represented one and this sideways v represented a 10. For Mayans, we had zero, represented by this space shuttle type of thing, um, or UFO <laughs> looking object. And then we had a bar which represented five, and then a dot represented one. Again, here's a rather new, uh, familiar system because we see it still in use today. Like when they want to name the Olympics or Super Bowls, etc., we still use the Roman numerals. So here are the equivalents uh, in the Hindu Arabic system. Uh, one, for just a basic I, and then V represents a five, X represents 10, L represents 50, C represents 100, D represents 500, and M represents 1000. We actually will see some of the applications once we get to the homework portion of our video. The Roman numeral system did uh, account for larger numbers and here you can see uh, how that works so 
if you had a larger number such as a 50 with a smaller number such as a 10 to its left then you would be basically subtracting so you would have like 50 minus 10 so this would represent 40 or here you have m which stands for a thousand and c to the left of it and when it's on the left you take it away you subtract so this would actually represent 900. For our familiar Hindu Arabic numeration system uh, all numerals are constructed from these 10 digits 0 1 2 3 all the way to 9 and the place value is based on the powers of 10 um, which makes it a decimal system and very very easy to work with and that's the basically 10 is the number base for the Hindu Arabic numeration system so when you see a familiar number like 6789 you're actually your brain is comprehending quite a bit of detail very very rapidly so you always want to start on the right side because you know what that digit is going to be that's going to be the units digit and then you move on to the next uh, uh, item on the left which will be the tens digit and then hundreds and then thousands so once you know that that's a thousand or ten cube you know that you can write this number as six times ten cube that means this number contains six thousands in it and then plus seven times ten squared which is the hundreds digit so seven times ten squared plus eight times uh, ten to the one plus nine times one now notice that if you want to be consistent you can also write this one as ten to the zero if you recall from a previous lecture whenever you raise a number to the power of zero the result is going to be one as long as the number is not zero uh, zero to the power of zero is undefined as a reminder of what the exponents mean remember when you write a to the n uh, the a stands uh, for the base n stands for the exponent and you may wonder where does the name power come in well the entire expression is a power so we call this the nth power of a that's the correct usage of uh, the uh, mathematical language here however a lot of people simply look at that and they just say a to the n and that's acceptable we, we use it so often we don't you know have time to always sit there and say oh the so-and-so power of this base so you can just say the base to the and then just say the exponent and of course that just means write the base as many times as the exponent and then multiply so you have n factors of a that are going to get multiplied by each other and again for as long as the base is not zero as i mentioned in the previous slide then a to the the zeroth power of a or a to the zero is going to be one one way to understand why a to the zero is one um, is to look at patterns like let's look at an actual number like say two let's look at some powers of uh, two in uh, descending matter so for example let's say i start with two to the four i know that that's 16. when i look at 2 cubed we see that that's 8 and it looks like it's one half of the previous result which was 16 right uh, when I look at 2 squared we know that that's 4 again notice that's one half of the previous result which was 8 so 2 to the 1 is 2 which again is one half of the previous result which was 4 so continuing this pattern notice the exponents have gone from 4 to 3 to 2 to 1 so the next exponent would be 0 in this pattern right now what will it be well let's see it should be a half of the previous result the previous result was a 2 right so 1 half of 2 is basically 1 that's one way of kind of coming to terms why the 0th power of a 
non-zero number is one. And of course, we did this for uh, base two. You can try this with any base that you like, except that, like for example, if you use base, uh, you use five as a base, let's say you have five cubed equals 125, the next result, five squared, which is 25, is not going to be one half of the previous result, it's gonna be one fifth. So one over the base of the previous result, etc. So five to the one, which is five, notice is once again, one fifth of the previous result, which was 25. So continuing the pattern, five to the zero should be one fifth of the previous result, which was five. And once again, you get one. So this will work consistently no matter what non-zero base that you use. A very uh, popular and powerful way of uh, teaching about um, base 10 numerals to students is to use what we call base 10 blocks. Uh, these blocks consist of the unit block, which is just one cube um, with one representing each side of the cube, the height, the, the length, and the width. And uh, now then you put 10 of those units together and you get what's called one long. So one long is the same as 10 units. And then you can put 10 of the longs together and you end up with what we call one flat. And then if you put 10 of these flats together, you end up with what we call one block. All right, not to be confused with the general way we're using blocks here, each of these is called a base 10 block, but when it has um, a thousand of them like this together, we call that one block as well. All right, so let's get a little practice with these um, base 10 blocks. What is the fewest number of pieces you can receive in a fair exchange for 11 flats, 17 longs, and 16 units? There are different ways to approach this problem and if you watch some videos on YouTube, etc., you'll see a lot of different uh, approaches. However, I'm going to try to show you the absolute easiest way to approach it. So what you need to keep in mind is what each of these uh, blocks amount to in terms of units. When it comes to a unit, of course, you, we know that that's just one unit. So we'll start with a long. Remember that one long is equal to 10 units, right? And the next uh, level over is a flat. We know that one flat is 100 units and one block is a thousand units. We looked at that in our previous slide. Let me remind you. Remember, one long is 10 units, one flat is 100 units, and one block is 1,000 units. Of course, you can think of one flat as um, 10 longs and one block as 10 flats, right? And you can also think of these two in terms of longs as well, right? So um, that's an equivalent approach. However, we want to work with units uh, at first. It'll make it easier. Watch. So here we have 11 flats. So that means... We can replace the flat with 10 units. So we get 11 times 10, uh, correction, 100 units, right? Flat, so it's 100 units. So we're gonna say 11 times 100 units, my apologies. So we end up with 1100 
units for our 11 flats, right? Be very careful. You see how easy it is to get distracted. So make sure that you're doing the number of units correctly. So one flat is 100 units. So 11 flats is 11 times 100 units. So 1100 units, right? Now we have 17 longs. We know the conversion there for each long is 10 units. So that means 17. We're going to replace the long with 10 units. And we end up with 170 units. And um, we have 16 units, which of course doesn't change it's still going to be 16 units remember we're converting everything to units as far at first so now if we combine all of them notice we get six one and seven is eight one and one is uh two so so basically what we have is we we have 1286 units that we're trying to exchange and we want to get the fewest number of uh, pieces back right so i look in here and i ask myself well how many of the big blocks meaning what we actually call a block is in here well we know that one block is a thousand units so in here we're not going to have two blocks that's too many that's two thousand so we know we have one block right Now, we have, for the hundreds, we have 200, so we know that's going to end up being how many flats? Two flats, right? Now, for the 80, we're going to want to use uh, longs, and how many of them will there be? We'll have eight longs for the 80. And we also have six units, which uh, we can't do anything about or convert to any larger uh, denomination. So we also have six units. So this is the best we can do. Now all we have to do is count the pieces. Remember, we're not combining on like things. We're just counting the number of pieces. Otherwise, you know you can't combine blocks and flats, etc. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the number of pieces. So we have 14, 16, 17. So 17 pieces is the answer. All right. So you see how simple this can be if you just approach it in a really simple and um, logical manner. So um, the, the big idea here is let's go completely to units and then we can easily determine uh, the number the fewest number of blocks that uh, uh, we would need uh, for a fair exchange so practice that maybe with another scenario and make sure you're comfortable before we move on okay let's take a look at some of the other bases one of the more um, um, used bases in the old days uh, the more um, common basis was the base five or the quinary system uh, basically it, it was uh, it's the same system you can see in the tallying uh, method as well as what we call base five methods so as far as uh, the digits zero through four are concerned they're exactly the same as they would be in our base 10 system so basically zero would be no fingers uh, well, one in base five would be just one finger, a two would be two fingers, three would be three fingers, four would be four fingers. Now, once you get to the five uh, in this system, you basically just say one hand, right? And zero fingers. So this is how five in this system actually turns into a one zero. So a one zero in this system if, you, if translated to base 10 would mean five. All right, it gets a little bit of getting used to, but you'll get a hang of it soon, don't worry. So 
when you, suppose you want to represent six right well think of it you have to keep thinking your hands right so six represents one hand and one finger right so that's why uh, six in base 10 translates into 11 in base five or one one is is a more accurate description it's not really uh it's it would be incorrect to say 10 here because it would some if somebody heard it they would think you're talking about base 10 so the correct way actually is to just say one zero one one uh for seven in base 10 we would have one two what does that mean that means one hand and two fingers on and on right so eight would be one hand and three fingers and uh, for example 14 um here one four here represent one hand and four fingers so what would that be that would be nine right and what is two zero in base five that just means what two hands and zero fingers that's it so um there's that so what does this represent well so basically what would what would two zero be in base 10 that that's basically 10 right and 21 here in base 5 means two hands so 10 and then uh, a 1 so that would be 11 as you can see in the blocks shown here now here is uh, a different way of that representation with the same meaning so one is just one two three four up to here we're, we're uh, uh, the same from here onwards you you can't use the digit five in this um, system because instead of five you're going to use a one because remember we're talking about hands right so one hand and zero fingers six is one hand and one finger seven is one hand and two fingers eight is one hand and three fingers etc right nine is one hand and four fingers and ten is what in this remember up here you're looking at base ten down here you're looking at base five so in base five a ten would be two hands and zero fingers Again, it'll, it'll get easier as you practice these. Okay, we know that if we have a number in base 10, we're multi we, each uh, place is going to represent a power of 10, right? So, for example, if you have uh, 341, you know that the 1 represents how many 10 to the zeros we have, right? The 4 represents how many 10 to the 1s we have. And the three represents how many 10 squares we have. Well, in base five, just replace the 10 with a five, right? So the powers of interest in base five are five to the zero, five to the one, five squared, five cubed, five to the four, and onward, right? So if you want to take this number right here, which is given in base five and remember if you're de dealing with a base five number you always have to write the five down here now here's a nice thing for you to realize so that you don't think you're going to have to write all that usually in practice we don't write five in practice we just write 11 one actually let's do it correctly right don't say 11 say one one two four four and we put a five down here okay just a numeral five and that means this number is in base five so we want to take this base five number one one two four four and see what it will end up being in our familiar base 10 system well remember what this means this is going to be the zero the first four here is the zero power the second one is the first power of five represent how many first powers of five we want in here this represents how many um, second powers of five right five squared these are the, this is the five cube place and this is the five to the four place so uh, even though we usually write it like this it might be easier for you to start here and then just go one times four plus four times five etc because it's easy when you start here so we know we're going to have uh, four times five to the zero remember this one here just represents five to the zero and then four times five to the one and then two times five squared and then one times five cubed and 
another one times five to the four. Now, these are easy. Now you're just dealing with regular base 10. So that's just gonna be 625 plus 125 plus two times 25 plus four times five and then plus four times one. So when you convert that, you realize that one, one, two, four, four in base five is none other than the familiar 824, okay? Again, if, <laughs> if studying other bases does us no good at all, it does make us appreciate base 10 much more greatly. Now there's like one base, for example, base two, which is still in use and very, very popular because it's basically the base used for um, programming computers, right? So um, they only use the numbers one and zero. So uh, studying bases is not just uh, for uh, mental exercise. They, they do have some uses um, in uh, some fields. So the number base we were just talking about, base two has a name. It's called the binary system. It only has two digits. Um, binary refers normally to two, right? <clears throat> base two is uh, very important, as we said, because of its use in computers. One of the two digits is represented by the presence of an electrical signal and the other by the absence of an electrical signal. So obviously, um, you can program it either way that you want, as long as you assign one to one and the other one to the other state. All right, so here's a very similar situation. Here we're looking at 10111 base two. So we wanna convert this. Now remember, we're in base two. So the powers of interest are two to the zero, two to the one, two squared, two cubed, two to the four, etc. So starting here we know that's going to be the 10 the 2 to the 0 or 1 so there's that 1 plus we know we're going to have 1 times 2 to the 1 and 1 times 2 squared and 0 times 2 cubed because there's a 0 there and then plus another 1 times 2 to the 4. so so if you just count from here Remember, what you could do is you could start with zero and count your powers only, right? Your exponents. So zero, one, two, three, four. That's how you know this is the two to the four digit and you can start writing it out, all right? Now we're just doing base 10 calculations. So it's gonna be 16 plus zero because zero times any number is zero plus four plus two plus one. If you add those up, you get 23. Here you can say 23 because this is what? That's a base 10 number and we're converting, okay? All right, here's another problem. This time we're gonna go from base 10 to base two. Think about it for a minute, pause the video, see if you can find a way to figure out what 27 in base 10 will be in base two. And when you've given it some thought, uh, come and um, see if you're on the right track. Okay, so remember, we're, we're going to base two. That means the number of digits available to us is suddenly gonna go down to two, zero and one, right? So, and also remember that the place values are not powers of 10, but rather powers of two. So the numbers of interest for place values for us are two to the zero, which is one, two to the one, which is two, two squared, which is four, two cubed, which is eight, two to the four, which is 16. And we could keep going if we needed to, right? But the, the first thing we want to do is to see how many of the highest power of 2 exists in here. Now, if I go 2 to the 5, right, notice that I go down, I go up to 32. Obviously, this number is too small for us to use any fifth power of 2 because that will be too much. So we know that this is not even going to come into the picture. But I can get a 16 uh, within 27. So I know that I have um, 
at least one two to the four in there now now if i go 16 so you may want to show it like this as well How many of these should we use? Okay, we know we can use one, two to the four. Now, if I were to use a two cube, right? That would give me 16 plus eight, which is 24, right? So that's good. I couldn't use two of those, for example, because that would be too much because um, 16 plus 16 would have been 32 so that would not be good so i know that i should use one of these so let me move this down here so i'm going to use one two to the four i'm going to use one two cube now Keep a tally. So, so far we have 16 plus 8, right? Now, this is what? That's 24, right? And uh, I keep having to move my um, writing down. So, give me one second. Okay, hopefully I should be fine this time. All right. So, that's 24, right? So, what's left? How much more do I need? I need three more, right? Well, think about it. I can't use any of the two squared um, places, right? Why? Because if I did, I would have two to the four, uh, 24 and four, that's 28. That's too much. So I'm not going to use any of those, okay? But I'm still short three units right so i'm going to go ahead and use one of these now continuing with my tally where am i at now i'm at 24 i, I just added one so uh one two so that's going to be two so we're at 26. Remember, that's one, but it's one what? One, two, right? And all I need is one more. So I'm going to use just one of these. And now I add the one and I get what? I get my 27. All right. So again, it gets some getting used to, but with practice, it'll become second nature to you. So we just realized that 27 um, in base 10 becomes this number so let's keep going with our presentation here so we're going to use one two cube we're not going to use any two squares but we are going to use one two to the one and we're going to use one two to the zero okay so basically that means that 27 in base 10 equals 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Give it a try. See if you can do this on your own and maybe do another uh, example and we will proceed. The main thing to keep in mind is that everything works like base 10 except what's changing your powers that's all in base 10 you deal with powers of 10 10 to the 0 10 to the 1 10, 10 squared 10 cube etc in these bases you work with what something other than 10 which is what makes them a little more difficult to work with right because 10 works so, so nicely as a base because mainly because multiplying by powers of 10 is so simple that's why uh, it's the king of all numeration systems all right one interesting system is base 12 system the base 12 system which is called the duodecimal system uh, it basically instead of having just 10 digits it has 12 digits so 
Once you run out of the standard uh, 0 through 9 for base 10, you get to 11 and 12. So, um, and, 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 I mean, the 11th and 12th digits, of course, the 11th one will be at 10. We'll use a T for 10 and we'll use an E to represent 11. All right, suppose we have this base uh, 12 number written here and we want to convert it to base 10. Think about how you may do that and then uh, come back and we'll see if we uh, have the same answer. Remember, always start with what your place values are going to be multiplied by, right? So we know that it's base 12, so that means we start with 12 to the 0, which is of course 1, and then 12 to the 1, which is 12, 12 squared, which is 144, etc. Right now, counting from right to left, we start with the 0th power of 12, and then first, and then second. So that's all we need. I mean, if I needed more, I would have figured out what 12 cube is, 12 to the 4, but I don't. This is just a three-digit base 12 number, right? So we know that um, we're just going to write it exactly how we would write a base 10 number in expanded format. Now, we know, again, this is the second power of 12th place, right? This is the 12 square place and we know what E stands for. E stands for 11, right? So we're going to have 11 times 12 squared plus this is the 12 to the 1 place or 12. So 2 times 12 and this is the 12 to the 0 place or just 1, right? So it's going to be T which we know stands for 10 times 1 all right now if we just multiply that out we'll get our answer all right so we have 11 times 12 squared plus 2 times 12 plus 10. And we get 1618. So in other words, E 2 T 12 equals 1618 in base 10. So this number in base 12 equals 1,618 1, in base 10. Now, normally we don't write it when it's base 10, right? So you could have just written it without writing the 10 here, but I think it's kind of nice to put it there realizing base 10 is just another system, uh, by, you know, numeral system with a different base. So it's not any better or worse uh, in the sense of uh, any kind of specialness, except that it's very easy to work with. So that's what makes it special. Otherwise, it works like any other base. So you could write 10, but because it's the most common type of base that is used, when we write no, no base, everybody understands that we're talking about base 10. Okay, now we're gonna go the other way around. We're gonna convert a base 10 number 1277 to base 12. All right, so if we stay organized about this, this can become quite a simple task. So what we're going to do, we know that we're going to be uh, dealing with place values that are powers of 12. So let's go ahead and take a look at some powers of 12. So we know 12 to the zero is 1 we have 12 to the 1 which is 12 we have 12 squared which is 144 and we have 
say 12 cubed we'll see if it's going to come in handy or not in a minute 12 cubed we're going to take a look at that all right 12 to the power of 3 that's 1728 all right so the number we're trying to convert is 1277 so that's going to be too much so we know we're not going to need anything further we these are the three powers of 12 that we're going to be interested in all right so in a systematic manner we'll start to see how many 144s there are in 1277 so to that end we'll just take 1277 and divided by 144 all right so we get eight and some change right what of interest to us is the whole part so eight so let's see how far eight of those 144s will how close it'll bring us to 1277 so we go eight times 144 and we get 1152 so we're going to keep track of that so we're going to write 11 well let's let's actually do this let's say how many of them we're going to use and when we multiply we know that we get 1152 all right so now we need to see how close we've come so we're going to take the 1277 and subtract from it the 1152 and that gives us 125 so now we want to see how many of these 12s we're going to need and of course we know that if we use 10 of those that'll bring us that'll give us 120 right so now remember that in base 12 instead of writing 10 we just write a t right but we know that we're going to multiply 10 by 12 so that's going to give us 120 so what we can do that's why i created this bottom row here we're going to keep a tally to see where we're at so we have 1152 plus 120 we're at 1272 so let's write it here all right so now we're very close now we just need five more to get to 1277 right so we're going to use five of these units and um, five times one is of course five and once i add it to what i already had that brings me to 1277 that's when I know I'm finished. So you can see that if you stay organized about this, this can be quite a, a doable challenge, right? So uh, make sure that you totally understand this, practice it, uh, maybe get a scratch piece of paper and see if you can just do it from the beginning without looking at any of my work and we'll move forward after that. All right. so in this example uh, we have we're given that this number is in base 12 g36 and uh, we know that it's equal to the base 10 number 1050 so we want to find the value of g so now uh, we're making a little bit of a leap and we're going to try to see if we can get an equation out of this that helps us so remember what g36 means right so these are powers of 12 so that's the zero power first power second power so the g needs to be multiplied by what think about it yeah i think i heard you say 12 squared correct yes you're right okay so plus now you know this is the first power of 12 place so 3 times 12 plus 
and this is the zero power of 12 which is just the ones place right so six times two, 12 to the zero which is the same as six times one all right now what we've done is we've created a base 10 expression here because we converted right so now when i write equals 10 50 this is just a good old regular base 10 equation so we just need to solve this equation for g of course 12 squared is 144 so 144 g plus 3 times 12 is 36 plus 6 equals 1050 so at, when it comes to solving equations always simplify each side before you start moving things around it's much more efficient and much less likely to get you in um, uh, into errors okay so 144 G plus 42 equals 1050 now we're going to subtract 42 from both sides so we get um, let me write this a little bit better all right so we get 144 G is equal to this is going to give me 2 from 10 is 8 4 from 4 is 0 and then so 1008 so to get G all we have to do is divide both sides by 144 and we end up with G equals now we're going to calculate that So we get seven g equals seven all right so that's how you would approach a problem like that it's all about knowing how to convert from one base to another which we did plenty of in this lesson so um that's pretty much a wrap for the lesson so per our usual practice now we'll take a look at a few of the homework problems together Okay, let's go ahead and start with a conversion between different numeral systems. We're going to uh, try to uh, answer this question. If the cornerstone represents uh, when a building was built and it reads this number in Roman numerals, when was it built? Well, again, if you're systematic about your approach, this can become a really simple task. So here's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and write that a little bit more spaced out to make it easier for us to work with. So I'm just going to write M D C C L X one, one, one. Anytime you transfer something from the screen to your own writing make sure you double check to make sure you didn't make any kind of error in your transfer because it would be a shame to miss a problem just because you copied it incorrectly so we'll double check m d c c l x and then three i's right okay so with these you're going to want to work your way from the left to the right we start with these remember basically work in pairs right we have an m and a d so what we'll do is to make it really simple for ourselves we'll just write the equivalents right on top of it so m we know it stands for a thousand d stands for 500 c stands for 100 now this graphic is not given with the problem so you just need to have a a little sheet for yourself handy so that you can do the conversions based on your sheet so this I added to this image all right and then we have another C which we know is a hundred as well L is 50 
x is 10 and the i's of course each represent 1 right so working our way from the left remember here we have a smaller number 500 written to the right of a larger number so here you add right so if it's if the if the smaller number is to the right of the larger number you add if it's to the left of it you subtract right so here we know that these two together are going to represent 1500 uh, these two c's they're the same value so you can just add them right so that so we can say plus that's just going to be 200 now here again we have a smaller number to the right of a larger number so since it's on the right we add so 50 and 10 that's going to be 60 and then these of course are just ones and you can you have three of them so plus three all right so if we just add we get 1500 1700 63 Again, be systematic about your approach and you'll be in great shape. All right, let's look at another one. All right, here's a question that uh, wants you to look at the blocks in other bases. And uh, it's one that you should be able to handle. I'll just give you a hint. <clears throat> we just want to see 60 flats, for example, in base 10 is how many units, right? You see, that's very easy to come up with because Remember that each um, flat is 100 units, so 60 times 100 units will give you what? 6,000 units. Now, this one is slightly trickier, but you should be able to handle it because you want 50 flats in base 15. Remember, the flats in base 15 are going to be size 15 by 15. So you're going to take 50 and multiply it by 15 squared basically so you're going to get this many units but this is in base 10 so all you have to do to get to the correct answer is convert that number to base 15 and you'll be good to go All right, here's an interesting problem which shows whether you're understanding your bases or not. Remember, this is a base B problem. So that means the first digit is going to be the B to the zero digit. The next one will be B to the one digit, right? So when you have... Um, forty-three or we should say 4, 3, right? Plus 1, 6, B equals 6, 1, B. Notice that this number here, when you convert it to base 10, is going to become 4 times B to the 1 plus 3 times B to the 0, right? This one is going to be 1 times b to the 1 plus 6 times b to the 0. And on the other side of the equation, we're going to have 6 times b to the 1 plus 1 times b to the 0. Keep in mind that the b to the zeros are just 1s. S take that equation, simplify it, and just solve for B, and you should have your answer. All right, on this one, I want to just give you a hint. The first three are not bad. If you have your table in front of you, you should be able to get it. The Mayan system is a little bit more complex. It's a base 20 system. So that starting down here, whatever that number you figure out to be, uh, you should multiply that by 20 to the 0. And what, add that to whatever the top number you figure to be from your table times 20 to the 1. And you'll find out what number you're dealing with. And then you'll be able to describe what comes before and after. So that's the hint on that problem.
Here's one you should be able to answer instantly, right? Because they want to know how many digits there are in this number. Remember, multiplying by 10 to the 18 is just going to basically move the decimal point 18 to the right. And if the decimal point is at the end, it's just going to end up adding zeros, right? 18 zeros um, to the number. So the number itself has one, two, three, four, five digits. Add 18 zeros and you get what? 23 digits. Okay, in uh, this problem, uh, in a future lesson, we're basically going to learn how to find the you know, uh, preceding and succeeding number for each one of these by adding and subtracting in that base. But since we don't know how to do that yet, the way to approach this problem is go ahead and convert your number to a base 10 number then find the preceding and the succeeding number and then convert those back into the given base okay so uh, again it'll be much easier once we learn how to add and subtract in these bases but for this section that's how you're going to approach it uh, i'll show you one example let's say part one right so 100 in base 8 we know is going to be in base 10 it's going to be 1 times remember the first digit is 8 to the 0 then 8 to the 1 and the 8 squared digit so it's 1 times 8 squared plus 0 times 8 to the 1 plus 0 times 8 to the 0 right so it's 64 plus um, 0 plus 0 so it's 64 in base 10 so if I don't write any base we know it's base 10 so the digit after will be 65 and the digit before will be 63 right so how do we convert 65 to base 8 remember because you want the answer in base 8 so remember that's going to be you're going to need 1 8 squared that gives you 64 of them right and uh, you're just going to need a unit so you're not going to want any 8 to the ones so 0 8 to the 1 plus 1 8 to the 0 so Notice it's going to be 1, 0, 1 in base 8, okay? And then you'll do the same thing for 63 to give the answer in um, for the number that comes before, right? Or uh, preceding. So um, 63, of course, uh, we can't get any 8 squares in there anymore because that's too much. So we're going to have to deal with 8s. How many 8s goes into 63? Well, 7 of them will give you 56. And that leaves um, 7. So 7 ones or 8 to the zeros, right? So notice that number becomes 77 in base 8. And that's where those two numbers come from. This is the preceding one, the 63. This is the succeeding one, which is 65, written in base 8. All right, here's a problem that tells us an interesting fact about Roman numerals. In Roman numerals, if you put a bar on top of a, a digit, it's going to multiply that by a thousand. So a student wants to know whether I bar I and MI are the same number meaning both of them being a thousand one and it, they actually are because remember when you multiply when you write i bar you're going to take the value of one multiplied by a thousand so you get a thousand and i itself is just one so when you write i bar i that's a thousand one and m i as we know is going to be a thousand m is a thousand and i i is one so that's also a thousand one so in fact, there are these two ways are both correct ways of writing a thousand and one in Roman numerals. All right, so that's a good place to bring our lecture to an end. Uh, 
you should be fine with the homework now and uh, take care of yourself and we'll see you at the next lecture